Welcome to the Poe Politikin Show, created in 2008. Poe Politikin is a hip-hop meets self-help brand. With each conversation, we teach the babies and share success secrets with you, the listener. Our focus is to preserve the hip-hop culture and introduce the future upcoming stars. Past guests of the Poe Politikin Show include Yo Gotti, Megan Thee Stallion, The Baby, Currency, MC Light, J Prince, Dead Prez, Razkaz, and more. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts to get automatic updates of each episode. Keep politicking with Poe on social media at Poe Politikin. Visit our website, PoePolitikin.com, for more exclusive content. PoePolitikin.com Welcome back to PoePolitikin.com, your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, type in Poe Politicking. Listen to my interviews since 2008. One, two, one, two, I'm a place to be with Devin Sunshine. How you doing? What's good? I'm doing good. How you doing this morning? I'm great. Awesome. Almost you, afternoon. Yeah, I know. Why you, uh, <laughs> why you go by Devin Sunshine? Um, so Devin is a name that, uh, it's not my real name, but it's a name that I was kind of given as a nickname back in high school. Uh, my boyfriend that I'm with now, actually, we we met in high school, broke it off for a few years, reconnected. But he, before he even knew me and met me, he told me that I looked like a Devin for some reason. So uh, I've gone by that for a little while. And then Sunshine, I was kind of inspired by um, the artist Kevin Abstract with like the, the first name, last name type deal. Um, and then Sunshine, I decided on as kind of like an ironic twist because, I mean, my music now is a little bit more... Uh, upbeat and, and hypey but when I started out and still sometimes my music is a little bit darker deeper more of like the conscious rap type feel so the sunshine aspect of it was kind of like an ironic twist to what my music portrayed and also kind of a a point to strive to as well to always you know put the the positivity and everything even if you know I'm going through it or the music is from a, a deeper darker point in my life or aspect of myself you know do you know, uh, you know, Devin the Dude? I do, yeah. I haven't listened to too much of his music, but <laughs> yeah, since taking on that name, I like, whenever I search myself or whatever, he always comes up too. So I'm like, oh, I got to check some more of that out. <laughs> He's tight. I'm going to say, so uh, let us know how you got involved with hip hop. Yeah, so I've been a hip hop fan since I started listening to music on my own, pretty much, which was a little bit later than most. I, I grew up kind of sheltered and I was into like, I, I was involved in musical theater and stuff as a kid. So I was into some some crazy sh shit as a kid. <laughs> but once I started to develop my own taste in music, I definitely gravitated towards hip hop. I've always loved um, the lyrical aspect of it and just the poetry and you know the rap aspect of it. I love the music and the production, of course, that's what makes a song, you know, a song. But I've always gravitated towards the poetry and the writing. I've always been a writer myself, whether it be music. I learned to play the guitar at 13 and used to write like acoustically or poetry throughout high school and college. Um, but yeah, when I was like, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, developing my own taste in music, I, I gravitated towards hip hop and have always been a fan since then, kind of have gone in and out through, you know, other genres, haven't always been super into hip hop, but I've always gravitated back towards that. And so, um, yeah, as I mentioned, when I was like 13 or so, I learned to play the guitar and would write acoustically. Back then, I wanted to be like the next Taylor Swift or some shit. <laughs> but um, it was actually around the time that Mac Miller passed that it kind of inspired me. His death kind of hit me hard just because, I don't know, I feel like I grew up with him, you know, his like kids mixtape and stuff back in 2010, uh, just growing up with him throughout hip hop. Um, and so, yeah, his death kind of kind of shook me and kind of inspired me to just say fuck it and try it. I was at a point in my life, I just dropped out of college, just moved back home. Um, and I was kind of finding my way back into music after a period of, of kind of pulling back from it, making music and writing music that is. Um, and yeah, his, his death just kind of hit me and inspired me to just buy a keyboard, buy Logic, uh, and just kind of create my, my own shit. And I, I put out a mixtape called Cool Galaxy. I just actually recently pulled it from streaming platforms because it was super raw, <laughs> super amateur as, as it goes. But um, yeah, that's what kind of inspired me. I was just at a point in my life where I was like, I've always wanted to kind of pursue this. And I just felt like if I, if I didn't try it, you know, I would just probably regret that for the rest of my life. So 
I'm trying it. I've been at it for, for a couple of years now, a few years, and I'm just kind of seeing, seeing where it takes me, having fun with it. And who's your, uh, besides Mac Miller, who are some of your other influences? Ooh, uh, Kanye West is a big one, even though I know he's a little controversial. How you gonna, like, how you gonna be, try to be Taylor Swift, but then you like Kanye? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? And actually, yeah, I mean, I kind of had beef with Kanye back in, you know, when that all happened, because I was still a Taylor Swift fan, but then, I don't know, kind of grew out of Taylor Swift as I as I got older and my music taste developed more into like the hip hop and alternative stuff more than her her kind of pop country feel. Um, and now I, I can't stand country music. Like, <laughs> it's kind of funny how that that turns. But um, what about yeah, that? You, I, you don't like uh, Lil Nas X or anything? Uh, I mean, I like him. I don't have anything against it. I honestly haven't. I've heard Old Town Road, obviously, but I haven't heard much of his his other music. Yeah. I don't not like country music, but it's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> no, it turned uh, into like a whole little genre where they're making like country hip hop songs. That's like a whole little subset now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I mean, country's huge. Like so many people love country. So it's cool that they're kind of crossbreeding that for sure. But um, yeah, I love Kanye. I've loved him for... Uh, for a while since I kind of grew out of Taylor Swift and then got into hip hop more and, you know, d dove into his like college dropout and late registration and, you know, all his early works. Um, huge Kanye West fan, huge uh, Eminem fan. Um, dang, who else? I like a lot of 90s hip hop. So like Biggie, Tupac, um, Outkast, Tribe Called Quest, a lot of that more like mellow mellow hip-hop um and recently i've been diving deeper into like the female rap artists because i used to only listen to male male rap artists not by choice but just kind of you know it's more the pr predominant uh you know they're more predominant in the industry and uh so you can i feel like you can kind of hear that with my early music it's definitely more like i said a little deeper darker more conscious rap but as i've kind of um broadened my horizons and i've been diving deeper into more of the female female rap artists recently my sound has kind of shifted to more of, a, more of a pop rap kind of alternative feel and i'm just at a better place in my life too so i'm making happier music but yeah some of some of my female rap inspirations i mean the ogs like missy elliott and lil kim and stuff like that but more recently i've been listening to a lot of ash nico she's kind of coming up popping off recently queen herbie um Shoot, I can't even think of any more now, but <laughs> yeah, I've been, been diving into the, the female rap artists and that's definitely been shaping my sound more recently. What, what is your story as an artist? As far as like my background or like, what uh, do you? Yeah, your background and what do you talk about in your music? Like, what do you try to talk about in your music? For sure. Um, I feel like I'm still kind of in the process. I mean, I've only been writing like making music and putting it out for a couple years now so I'm still kind of in the process of of finding and developing my sound it's definitely uh like honed in more and more recently um but yeah I just try to you know rap and write about what's real I was kind of going through some shit a few years back and that's what that's another reason I kind of started to get into music and writing because I was you know using that as an outlet so that was more um a little darker, more angsty and angry, kind of, I don't know, because I was going through it back then. Now, um, as I've, you know, been making music and coming into myself and finding my sound, I've definitely, my confidence has grown. Um, and so my music has kind of shifted to take more of a, more of a confident and semi like sexual tone as well. I've been trying to kind of implement uh, like the female empowerment type vibe with my, my latest song, Begging on Your Knees. It's definitely kind of a, kind of a dominatrix type vibe. So it's uh, it's definitely like hyping up the female empowerment. And I think that, I don't know, some people, they get touchy about like women being sexual and stuff like that. But I think when we do that for ourselves rather than men forcing us to do that, or I don't know, doing it themselves, it's like taking back that power and, uh, you know, taking it back into our own hands. So if we're choosing to to be that way and portray that, it's, you know, reflecting female empowerment. Um, so yeah, so my music more recently has been taking the shape of more kind of confident, empowering type uh, vibes and messages and stuff. But at the end of the day, I just kind of try to write about what I'm going through. So if I'm, you know, going through a tougher time, it'll probably be deeper, darker, more, you know, uh, I don't know, just deeper <laughs> lyrics and heartfelt stuff. Uh, but yeah, more recently, I've just been kind of kind of feeling good and just uh, 
I mean, this year's been tough, but it's it's been cool for myself personally as I've kind of come into myself and and experimented more with my music and my sound to kind of find that more more confident vibe and be able to put that into my music and make some more more hype songs so it's not all <laughs> depressing and and deep. But what happened to you? You keep saying like everything like you you were saying you dropped out and went back home, but then you keep saying everything better now. So what happened? Yeah, so I mean, music was a huge part of that, um, and just kind of going through. When I dropped out of college, I was like twenty one, twenty two. What was that? What was you going to school for? Um, I was studying child and adolescent development, actually. So it was something totally different. Well, I was studying that for a while, and then I I switched my major to sociology, which was really cool. I was studying that for only a, a year, a semester or so before I kind of had this awakening slash existential crisis and I was just like I don't feel like I'm supposed to be here uh, so I dropped out of college moved back home and I was kind of just doing my own thing for for a little while finding my way I was going through kind of a time where I was just diving deep into myself and kind of figuring out like I don't know was just going through one of those times as a young adult where I was questioning you know what I'm supposed to be doing here what my purpose is on this earth Again, like I said, kind of an existential <laughs> crisis type deal, but it caused me to really, uh, you know, turn inward and reflect inward. I was doing some psychedelics, really diving into like my spirituality and my my mindset and my mental health, um, and just kind of getting getting that on straight and just exploring. I don't know, kind of the the aspects of of the universe and what it means to be to be a human here, and that kind of led to me um i mean it was tough obviously like anyone going through kind of a spiritual breakthrough or existential crisis as i keep calling it it's it's dark times and it was definitely i was going through some stuff um just with like family stuff and personally um that was tough but it helped me to like i said kind of come into myself with music and express that through music and since doing that it's it's just really helped me find myself um and kind of find my voice as well and that's you know, really helped up my confidence and, and just the whole, like I said, kind of the, the spiritual growth and um, the mindset work, mental health work, just really focusing on, on what's good and right for me, not pleasing other people. I grew up a huge people pleaser. So I've been trying to shed that, just shed all these layers that are, are kind of unnecessary and don't, um, I don't know, don't fulfill me or, or help me out, you know? So yeah. And in doing music and kind of finding my, my voice through that. And like I said, I'm still, you know, in the process of finding my voice and creating my sound and brand and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's it's really helped me build my confidence. And I think that's that's definitely apparent in my most recent single and a lot of the, the songs I got coming out. I'm sitting on a boatload of music right now. I'm trying to strategize how I'm going to release it, but I've got a lot coming. <laughs> and you were saying, you were saying psychedelics, was you doing that from, you heard about, it's something, they're doing it out here, but it's like someplace you can go and it's like, a part of a frog you can eat oh or, yeah it's like the the frog skin <laughs> or something and they like burn okay. it into you i wanted to try it but i was like i don't know about that shit, that shit was yeah i think it's like similar to dmt or like the same kind of kind of thing but yeah i had a couple friends that do that or did that and they had like scars on their ankle they have to like burn the the stuff into you i don't know it's wild i've never done that but um yeah done some some mushrooms some acid it's definitely i don't know it's not for everyone but it's if you're if you're in the right mindset and you you know you're kind of searching for something, I think it's a great tool to uh, expand your mind and kind of I don't know. It's like some people argue that you can you know do all that through meditation and through uh, you know just your own your own way without psychedelics. But I think it's a cool kind of quick dive into your own mind and the universe and and just everything that that <laughs> entails. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if people's. Uh... Cause I know, like people don't understand. Like I know, Steve Jobs said when he started doing acid, he came up with all the iPhone shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, it really it can really expand your mind for sure. Um, yeah, I, I wrote some some crazy stuff on on acid, and I don't know. I mean, I've I've never done anything like taken a huge dose or anything and like lost my mind. But I don't know. Maybe one day <laughs> we'll see. I want to try DMT too. People say that that's like life changing. So. That's what I want to try. Yeah. Yeah, I watched that documentary they had on it a little while ago. I think it was on Netflix. So uh, describe your creative process. Ooh, let's see. So I used to, when I first started out, 
I was just writing raps and not really, like I know a lot of people like they'll filter through beats, go through beats and then kind of write to the beats. Um, when I first started writing, I was just writing straight rap, straight poetry kind of. And then I put all my own music to it. That's when I bought my keyboard and was producing everything myself. My first mixtape, which was, it was cool. Sometimes I'm like, should I have taken it down? Cause it's very like, it was very raw and very just unique, but I'm like, nah, I just want to portray my best work. So I've taken it down since then, but it was really cool. I, I produced the whole thing myself. A lot of it was just keyboard work and like, um, kind of that acoustic feel with uh, a little bit of like a drum kit beat feel to it. Um, but yeah, I was just writing straight lyrics and then putting the music to it. Since then, um, I've kind of delved into working with other producers and other creatives. So now I'll write more to, to a beat to kind of be inspired by the feel of the music and the vibe. Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes I'll write first and then either create a beat to it or, you know, find a beat that fits. But um, yeah, I just kind of, kind of now I just go through through beats or if, you know, I work with a couple, couple producers exclusively and they'll, they'll send me beats and I'll just go through those and kind of whatever I'm feeling that day, write it out. Or I've been trying to be more, uh, more precise with my writing and be more um, clear about like the message I'm trying to portray. Like I said, with begging on your knees, uh, it's, it's that, that confident vibe, that female empowerment. So I was really honing in on that and trying to focus the lyrics on that rather than like, I don't know, just like a cypher track or something where you're just kind of freestyling and going off in whatever direction. Um, so I've been trying to do that to really kind of solidify my sound coming up and, um, just give my, my music more of a, an overall vibe and similarity. But yeah, I mean, I just kind of, kind of write what I'm feeling too. And you can definitely tell, I feel like when, when you're trying too hard, like I, I definitely try to just let it come to me naturally and, and just kind of be divinely inspired to write. Like if I'm sitting there contemplating over lyrics for too long or, you know, trying to think of rhyme schemes, I'll just set it down and walk away. Cause I'm like, all right, this isn't, this isn't meant to be, it's not supposed to, you know, happen like this. So I, I like when it's, and I try to let it happen naturally where I'm just, you know, feeling inspired and it's just coming to me and I'm writing it real quick. Usually I can write a song in, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes if I'm really feeling it and just kind of get it all out. Um, and then I'll go back and tweak stuff, you know, or rewrite certain things. But definitely if I'm, you know, if it's taking too long and I'm trying too hard, I'm like, all right, this isn't, this isn't meant to be, it's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and then uh, what's your current project you're working on right now? So I'm not working on a, pro well, I'm kind of sitting on an album. I'm trying to release a bunch of singles to kind of gain momentum with my, you know, audience and the streaming platforms and stuff. Um, so I'm going to be releasing a bunch of singles in the next through the end of the year and then probably through 2021 as well. But I am sitting on a bit of a project. It'll probably turn into an album by the time it's released. I'll probably have enough tracks by then. Um, and it's definitely more, it's kind of more the OG Devin Sunshine, like the, the deeper, more conscious stuff with a bit of a more pop twang like I've been uh, <laughs> putting out recently. But it's, it's cool. It's, it's going to be titled, well, unless shit changes, but right now it's going to be titled Your Comfort Zone Will Kill You. And it's about um, just kind of this whole process I've been going through of finding myself and and uh, expanding myself, getting out of my comfort zone to to create this music and grow as an artist. And I mean, even doing stuff like this, like I I used to be, I still am a pretty shy introvert, but I used to be way more shy and introverted. And I don't know, since, uh, like I said, kind of finding my voice and expressing myself through music, it's, it's made it a lot easier to, I don't know, just come out of my, my shell and be more confident in myself. And uh I don't know, get out of my comfort zone, <laughs> do stuff like this. If you wasn't making music, what would you be doing? Oh boy. Um, I don't even know. That's a, that's a good question. Cause that's the thing too. I feel like sometimes I'll get down on myself cause I feel like I like came into the game late or like I'm 24 now, which I know is still super young, but you know, considering some people who, who get discovered when they're like still a teenager or young 20s, whatever, sometimes I'll, I'll get down on myself or get in my head like, you hopped on this game too late, like you're too old. Because um, it took me a long time in life to kind of figure out what I wanted to do and the things I was passionate about. That's why I switched my major in college a couple times and that eventually it was like, I don't feel like this is right for me. So music was the first thing. I mean, I've been involved in music my whole life. Like I said, I grew up doing musical theater and I was in choirs and st stuff going to school. Um, and I've always written music, but never, I don't know, I guess I just never really had the confidence in myself or the confidence to 
like I said recently, just say fuck it and try it. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I, I think that in finding myself, it's, it's made it easier to, I, I don't know, it just helped me realize that music was the thing that I, I really wanted to pursue. And it was the first thing that, I, well, I was doing art for a little bit before that. I, I also paint and draw and stuff like that. Not as much now that I've dove deeper into music, but I was doing the art thing for a while. I don't know, and nothing just really clicked like the music thing did. So since I've, I've started this, it's just like the one thing I'm passionate about and, and full, full, fully on board for. So uh, <laughs> I'm just giving it all I got. And what do you say your goals are for your career? Ooh, um, I don't know. I'm still kind of in the process of just riding the wave and seeing where it takes me. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be like, you know, a, an A-list celebrity, like, <laughs> you know, all up in the, in the charts and stuff like that. I would love to just be able to you know, make enough money doing what I love, making the music I love, have a, a strong enough core fan base that I can, you know, sell merch, go on tours, um, you know, just make a living doing what I love. Like I said, music's the only thing that I'm really, well, not the only thing I'm really truly passionate about, but the only thing that I, uh, you know, can really see myself doing long-term and everyone, you know, wants to make money doing what they what they love. So that's, that's the goal, I think. I, I mean, I've got, you know, people that I would love to work with or do features with you know that are up there but I don't know I'm not really trying to I'm trying to just take it a day at a time and I, I definitely I'm constantly working on just like my patience and not getting too ahead of myself because like I said coming into coming into things and feeling like I'm already kind of behind the game and it took me so long to figure out that I even wanted to do music and pursue that I can get caught up in the the mindset of like well, I want to be here already, or I want to be doing this, or I want to have this big of a fan base, and I just got to step back a lot of the times and remember, like, why I'm doing this, and how far I have come, and all the connections I have made, and um, yeah, so I feel like the first year I was doing music, I was real caught up in, like, grinding, 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 really pushing, trying to, uh, I don't know, I felt like I was just trying to kind of get in my head, get ahead of myself, and be bigger than, than what I was, you know, your first year putting out music, you're still kind of discovering your sound and discovering uh you know just working through all the logistics of things so now um a few years in I'm just trying to kind of step back and and let the the wave kind of do its thing <laughs> I mean I've got you know goals that I'm I'm setting and, and certain things on a daily basis um but yeah I'm just kind of trying to see where it where it takes me and just kind of appreciate the journey because like I said it's easy to get caught up in well I want to be here already I want to you know, have a platinum record or whatever, but I don't know. I'm just trying to kind of enjoy the journey because once, you know, all these stars get there, they always say, well, I wish I could go back to, you know, before I was famous and before uh, when I was just making music in my bedroom and, and the journey of it. So I'm trying to appreciate where I'm at now. It's a big thing for me. Then what are, uh, who are some of the artists you want to work with? Oh boy. Um, I'd love to work with Ashniko and Queen Arby, like I said, those those couple of female rappers that I was talking about. Um, I mean, Kanye West would be dope. I love him. I think he's always making, I don't know, some of his music, especially recently, can be kind of hit or miss, but he's such a dope producer and like, he's just such a creative mind. I would love to work with him and just see what we came up with. Um, damn, I would say Mac Miller, but rest in peace. Uh, I don't know. I, I've got a, a list of people. Can't think of them off the top, but it'd be cool to work with a lot of people. I don't know. There's so many talented people in this industry. It's it's crazy. <laughs> okay. Then how's, uh, has COVID affected you, Amy? Um, yeah, definitely. One of my goals for 2020 was to get out and do more live shows, and then COVID hit, and I was like, well, shit, I guess that's uh, not going to be achieved this year. But I've been trying to hop on more of like the live streaming type deal and um, doing more of that. But yeah, it's definitely affected, you know, musicians everywhere as far as gigs and stuff like that. I wasn't at the time or before COVID doing like paid gigs or anything like that. So I, it wasn't affecting my income in that way. I wasn't even doing shows or getting paid for that. I know a lot of musicians, it really affected their income because they were making a lot of money doing shows. Um, but I just wanted to get out there and do more shows for the experience and just you know, to grow as an artist doing more shows and then COVID hit and I was like, all right, well, I guess we got to re-strategize, but it's, it's been a blessing because it's definitely, you know, I, I was off out of work for a long time. I'm back working now, thankfully, but, um, I was out of work for six or seven months and it really just gave me the time to 
really give all my my attention to my music and I've I've written so much music I've grown a lot as a songwriter um as just a recording artist you know recording my own music I record all my own music here in my bedroom my home studio it's not all set up right now but <laughs> when I record it is um so yeah it's given me that time to really just kind of focus on that and um focus on the networking aspect too just connecting with you know all the people that engage with my music and, and fuck with my music I try to be very engaging with the the small following I do have on social media just to really um I don't know build that core fan base and and that's like the cool part about music too is just connecting with people who who fuck with it and other other creatives I've been working on a lot of collabs uh in the last many months so it's been a blessing and a curse it's definitely you know hindered some things and some goals that I had set out to achieve this year but at the same time it's given me the time to work on things that I never even would have thought of working on you know so there's been pros and cons. All right. What else you got going on? That's Just it. in life or yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I mean, music wise, like I said, I'm sitting on a lot of music. So I'm just kind of trying to be patient as always work on my patience and strategize how to how to release that and when the right time is for that. Um, so yeah, always working on music as far as other things in life. Um, my boyfriend and I, we were real into like the the farming, self-sustaining aspect of things, which is kind of funny. People are really like, really? Like my vibe on, I don't know, just my own vibe, my personal vibe. People are like, I can't really see you like doing that. But we've got chickens in his backyard and a whole garden and stuff like that. So I'm real into that. And like the, the health aspect of things, I'm really into uh, nutrition and uh, I don't know, this all is so random, but <laughs> people are like, really? But I don't know, it's other stuff that I'm passionate about, other stuff I got going on in my life. But I'm definitely a victim, or a, not a victim, I'm definitely guilty of uh, being a workaholic. So I, I do focus a lot of my time on on music and my creativity and and also like listening to music as well. Just, I, I spend a lot of time, um, I, I go hiking a lot. I, you know, I like to go out and hike and I'll just like listen to music. I'm trying to get into podcasts more because I don't know, podcasts are cool and you can always learn new stuff. But I, I spend a lot of time uh, listening to music and I don't know, just helping it shape my sound. And that's just kind of how I like zone out and meditate too. So I'll, I'll spend a lot of time doing that. But yeah, like I said, I'm definitely guilty of being a workaholic. So a lot of my time is spent, uh, you know, on my own music, but it's, it's also not even work because I love it. So, but I'm definitely always trying to find that balance because that can be unhealthy as well. <laughs> and, um... What would you like to say to your fans and supporters? Ooh, um, just thank you for freaking rocking with me. I know, like I said, I've only been at this a few years and it's definitely been a journey of kind of finding myself, finding my sound, finding just my overall vibe. And it's been cool like to see people stick with me through it all and vibe with my newer music, uh, still vibe with my older music. It's cool when I when people hit me up and they're like, you know, I really loved this song that you did back in the day. Or like, are you gonna be making more kind of conscious rap music, deeper music? And I don't know, it's just inspiring that people, especially cause as an artist, everything you put out, you think it's like your best work, you know, all your old stuff, especially myself, as soon as a song is out, I'm already over it from, you know, recording it and listening to it so many times. and. I mean, the hype of release day is always, you know, it, it reinvigorates the song. But by the time, the, by the time the song's out, I'm already like, no, nah, I could do better, like <laughs> on to the next one. So it's cool when people really rock with my old stuff and they want more of that because I don't know, that was just like, like I said, I've grown into myself a lot this year. So looking back on even my older stuff, it's almost like a, a little baby naive version of myself that I'm just like oh damn I was really doing my thing back then and people people still rock with that music so it's cool to, to hear people ask for that and but also be you know into my new stuff and just support me all along the way and um yeah like I said I recently took down my first mixtape but I pretty much have everything that I've ever released up on Spotify and my SoundCloud still as well so it's been cool to um I don't know, just kind of see myself grow through my discography. A lot of people, and I've gotten some flack too for, for like putting out my, my earliest work because people, I don't know, people have said like, you should just start, start over, start your Spotify over and just like release your newer stuff to, I don't know, uh, have more of like a solidified brand. But I think it's cool that I have 
variety to my music and especially the the fans and supporters that have been there since like day one when I started stuff they can definitely see my growth through my discography yeah. and I say keep it there. To, to me I like that I like when you can see their growth like sometimes if you just see that one song then you like well is that day one project because they only drop one yeah. project. it's like anybody can come up you can kind of look up and put out one good project on the real <laughs> so yeah like, can you like you want to see that i want to see that i don't want to just see one project i want to go back and hear it before like and then you be like oh they got way better you like that so. yeah exactly exactly so um yeah so i've been doing that and yeah it's just been cool to see see people still rocking with me and growing with me um and yeah like i said i'm still kind of in the process of i'm still so early on in the game i'm i'm finding my my sound and my way through all this so to just have people support me through it all has been super cool and then what's that book behind you book behind me oh this is start playing keyboard because uh i took so yeah i played guitar since i was like 13 i took piano lessons from my my grandma when i was like a kid just basic stuff but yeah when i got into making music um and started to really take it seriously like i said i bought myself a keyboard i was teaching myself piano and i used to produce all my own work now i work with other producers just because it's not my strongest suit, you know, I'm, I, I try to focus on the, the writing and the artistry of it more than the production aspect. I still, uh, actually my next song coming out, it's dropping November 13th, is uh, produced by me. It's the first song I've produced of my own in a while, and it goes pretty fucking hard. But um, yeah, so I was producing all my own stuff in the beginning, now not so much, but I'm still trying to, I would love to be like able to play the piano fluently, but I just, I don't have the discipline to sit down and <laughs> learn how to play the piano, but I'm trying because I'd love to be able to do that. I love like Mac Miller, how he could just sit down and play the piano. Like I said, he's, he was such a talented musician. So many people see him as just like a rapper, but he was, he was so talented, you know, in so many aspects. So I really admire that. And I would love to, it's a goal of mine for sure, to be able to play the piano fluently. I just got to discipline myself and actually <laughs> learn how to do it. All right, I want to say uh, thanks for Paul taking with me. Most definitely. Thank you for having me. This was fun. This was cool. No doubt. You want to tell me your social media? Yeah. So um, Devin Sunshine on all streaming platforms, just, you know, as it sounds, D-E-V-I-N, Sunshine. And then on um, Instagram and Twitter, I'm Devin Sunshine with two U's. So S-U-U-N, Shine. And then Facebook, everywhere else, just regular Devin Sunshine. I just couldn't get the the regular Devin Sunshine on Instagram or Twitter handle, so I put the two U's in there. But yeah, just Devin Sunshine on all social media platforms and uh, streaming platforms. You can find my music everywhere. Asking me to stay, don't tell me this is not okay. You're the uh, dipper uh, in my sticky powder, honey. Yeah, Stir me up and yeah. hear me say. I got some pent up energy and some real black memories, and I'm looking for a way to get you begging on your knees, please. To get you begging on your knees, please. To get you, get you begging on your knees. Cause see, I'm looking for a way to make you cry. Life for just a second longer. Listen yeah. to me, you're the sparkle in my motherfucking eye. Got me feeling kind of shy. Flip it, trick it, and reverse it. Now I'm coming off the fire, wrapped and slide. Ooh. Give me, give me, licky, licky, yeah, I want more. If you listen to me now, it'll be worth it. I'll make motherfucking sure. Otherwise, boo, I can see you to the door. I'm the dragon in this dungeon. Piss me off and hear me roar. Uh. Some pent up energy and some real life memories. And I'm looking for a way to get you begging on your knees, please. To get you begging on your knees. To get you, get you begging on your uh. I got some pent up energy and some real life memories. And I'm looking for a way to get you begging on your knees, please. Yeah. To get you begging on your knees, please. To get you, get you begging on your knees, please. Uh, give me, give me sticky, icky, licky, licky, I adore ya. Whisper in my ear that I'm your dirty little. Yeah, busting out the chest of contraband, we're never bored. Yeah, even when I finish, I got more. Uh. I got some pent up energy and some real life memories, and I'm looking for a way to get you begging on your knees, please. To get you begging on your knees. To get you, get you begging on your. Uh. <laughs> All right, ladies, listen up. I'm going to need all of you to stand up. 
The Poe Politicking Show is brought to you by Audible. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, Audible is great for any continuous learner wanting to grow and expand their knowledge and insight. Go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and get an audiobook of your choice free with a 30-day trial. After the trial, your paid membership will begin at $14.95 per month. With your membership, you will receive one credit every month, good for an audiobook on Audible. Cancel before your trial ends and you will not be charged. So go to www.audibletrial.com slash PO Audio and download a free book by Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Napoleon Hill, Les Brown, Damon John, and more. Always remember that knowledge is power.